One thing you gotta have when you're in Los Angeles is Korean food. Best Korean food in the country right here. And what I'm really craving is some nice hearty Korean soup. And there's a place around here that sells just that, starting at seven o'clock in the morning. Right here, Hanbat Soluntang. Yeah, I love these Korean restaurants where the whole place only specializes in a couple of items, that's all they sell. And the whole setup is um, scallions, a lot of scallions. I've never run out of scallions here. Some salt, because the soup is gonna come a little bland. You're gonna add your own salt, um, chilies. And like I said, this is the only thing they sell. Soluntang, different types, mixed beef, brisket, flank, intestine, tongue. I got it mixed. So they only have soluntang and suyuk, which is Korean boiled pork. This is amazing too. I got the sulantang and the soy yolk. I think this is actually perfect amount of food for me. This might not even be enough. First, the soy yolk, it is immaculate. You know how you, when you can just look at something and before you even take a bite, you know that thing is gonna be the softest, most tender, amazing, most tender cut of meat before it even touches your lips. And look at the fat, like a juicy river flowing between a canyon of lean beef. We also got parts with little tendon, if you prefer that, and I absolutely do. But regardless of whatever piece you get, you're guaranteed for a mouthful of tenderness. And the soup, if you never had this before, it's a popular soup typically made with oxtail and bone marrow. And that's why it has such a milky, creamy look to it. And flowing inside, it's just a mix of beef. Brisket, you got flink intestine, I see a little tripe, I see a little tongue. But again, whatever cut you get, you can see just how tender the beef is. Of course, condiments, you got kimchi, some rice. I love scallions. And first thing I'm gonna do is taste my soup, make sure it's salty enough for me. Oh my God. That is the best part of waking up right here. I'm gonna try my best to explain the feeling, the sensation that just touched my tongue, okay? This soup for me needs a little more salt. Now, that's not an insult at all because even though it, it needs a little more seasoning for me, that flavor, I don't think I've ever had many foods in my life where I felt like it needs more salt, but at the same time, it's delicious beyond words. This is by far the creamiest, milkiest beef soup I've ever encountered. And it has a raging bowl type of beef flavor. You can tell the beef has been stewing for a long, long, long time. You taste that nice little gelatinous flavor from the marrow, and it's just like the softest, silkiest, beefy kiss lingering on your lips. Oh my God. Add a little bit of salt, and you don't need to. You could very well eat this with some kimchi, and that's gonna already taste incredible. Oh man, but with some salt, <laughs> it highlights even more of how creamy this broth is. This thing is so smooth, it could start in the next James Bond movie. For real. <laughs> International soup of mystery, this Solentan right here. You almost need some kimchi to go with this. Just because the soup, once you take a sip, it's gonna coat your tongue in this like beefy silk, so. <clears throat> you almost need a kimchi to kind of break that up a little bit. Mm. Fire kimchi. Sip of soup. Close your eyes and just let that sensation wash over you. Mm. It's so funny. It's kind of like almost eating sushi with a little wasabi and soy and the steak. Mm. I feel like I'm taking my taste buds on a gentle, sultry vacation right now. I mean, everything that's touching my tongue is so delightfully gentle, comforting, and delicious. I totally forgot. I haven't even tried the meat and the soup yet. Mm, 
if this beef is any more tender, you could just use a straw and eat this whole thing. Also, right now, about nine in the morning on a weekday, place is packed. You know, in a good Korean place where you're surrounded by Korean uncles and aunties, this early in the morning. Oh man. <sighs> This whole thing just makes you feel so good. Also, I had some uh, unfortunate soup accidents on my shirt, but you know what? For good food, sometimes sacrifices has to be made. I think with good comfort food, it's not just about what it is or what the flavor is, it's how it really makes you feel. I think if everybody wakes up, have a bowl of this beef soup, people will be nicer and the world will be a better place. All right, the next thing I wanna try, Korean barbecue is supposed to be the best in Los Angeles. I've been wanting to go to this place for years. It's like a long line like all the time, but let's go see what the hype is all about. So yes, you can't eat here by yourself, um, I was told, as long as you order one of the combos. So here are the two combos, the beef or the pork. This looks so much better. This place I'm at is called Baekjong. And this is what I'm going for, the beef combo. Thin sliced brisket, marinated beef, prime boneless short rib, prime ribeye. And the setup is pretty unique. It's a charcoal setup, and they give you egg here. So the steamed egg is right around the pot. And then you got the Korean cheesy corn, kimchi pancake, some seaweed, and some sprouts. Like I said, I've been wanting to come here for years. Every time I came here, I'm lying out the door. So this is a really obscure time, about four o'clock in the afternoon. And this is known pretty much by far as the best Korean barbecue in Los Angeles. It's not all you can eat, so. It's gonna be a little pricey. Um, I ordered the combo for $69.99 for myself. Hopefully it's good and it'll fill me up. First thing up is the brisket. This is my favorite cut in Korean barbecue. Thin slices of juicy wonder. Ah, interesting. Sweet and then a radish. So you dip it in there, and then you put on the seaweed and radish. A little sprouts and scallion. Ah, okay, thank you. That's an interesting combo. You get a char on this brisket. I did have Korean barbecue every single day for the rest of my life, really because of this. My favorite cut of beef. You have a nice combo of fat and lean, which this has. It's still gonna be juicy. This is a sum I've never done before. I mean, I've done the radish thing. I've just never done the seaweed outside of the radish. Oh. I gotta admit, that's mind blowing. That combo's ridiculous. It's one of the only Korean places that gives you a little wasabi for that additional boost of heat. Not only do you get a crunch from the radish, but the fragrance from the seaweed. I gotta make myself another one, and this might be a staple when I go to Korean barbecues from now on. Like, not all Korean barbecue places has um, seaweed for you, but I think I'll bring my own. Load it up. Not only does it have a great crunch from the radish, but that thing sprout, that's playing a starring role there as well. I see where it is everything. It's just collecting all that juice that's dripping down from that radish. So you're no longer eating something that's really messy. Like you want the juice to come down and just get trapped in that web of seaweed. And that's where all that flavor is gonna reside. Oh, this fermented bean soup is so good. Everything here, like they bring the heat. And I very much respect them for that. It was between this or the kimchi stew. Trust me, get this amazing, tender beef brisket oil in this rich fermented spicy broth. You know that flavor town that Guy Fury is always talking about? That, it's, it's right here. I need to chase this with some steamed egg. Mm. Well, that's a great combo. At first, I just kind of want to eat the steamed egg by itself, but there are no accidents in life. When the egg accidentally throw into this beef stew. That was no coincidence. The food gods arrange all things. A little steamed egg inside this rich broth. 
It just brings additional creaminess to this bowl of flavor. Look at the marbling on that short rib. Have you ever seen something more pretty? That is some of the most beautiful cuts of steak you'll ever lay your eyes on. Oh my God. This is the tenderest cut of beef I've had since I was in Japan. I mean, this is not wagyu or anything, it's just American beef. But you saw the marbling, the intricate patterns, the beautiful designs of fat just carving its way through the meat. Just looking at that, you know there's gonna be a good bite. I'm gonna call this ninja beef because it goes into your mouth with a sting and powerful beef flavor. And then, before you realize it, it just slowly melts away. I'd happily pay whatever they're charging for their short rib. This is like a random transition, but I think they put some uh, sesame sauce or peanut sauce in here. This on its own even, it's amazing. Flash piece. Just like a good date, this was over way too soon. This is the marinated beef. I think tenderness runs in the family at this joint. Oh man, that is good. Not as good as the short rib though, but this is tender. And this marinated beef, not overly sweet. The flavor is perfect. I absolutely love this place. Here's why. Typically, I would always recommend all you can eat Korean barbecues because it is gonna be a better deal. Of course, a la carte Korean barbecue places, the quality is gonna be much better, but the quality here is much, much better. Man, what I just ate by myself, could usually be split between two people for about $70 at a Korean barbecue is not bad. I went to a Korean barbecue in New York, spent about $60, $70 just on myself, and I wasn't even a quarter full. I mean, I could still go for a steak, but I'm satisfied. So yeah, definitely one of, if not the best, non-all-you-can-eat Korean barbecue places I've been to in the U.S. for sure. All right, back at the 626, and there's a really good dessert place right by my hotel. I think they just opened. This place, Sweet Honey Dessert and they got this souffle pancake. They got a bunch of tofu desserts, mangoes. Really, really good. Souffle pancakes. That looks really, really good. This is my favorite, Chinese tang yuan. Mochi balls, whether they're sesame, or walnuts, or peanuts stuffed inside. I'm gonna get one of these. And a souffle pancake. Every time I come to a place like this, I have an idea what I want, but then I talk to the servers and they, they tell me what's the best. I usually go with that. Um, and they told me this is one of their most popular items. This is mango sago with parmelo and their signature soft tofu. If you guys don't know, like soft tofu is a huge Chinese food item. We love it. We typically eat it for dessert or breakfast and you can have it savory or sweet. And it looks really, really pretty. It kind of looks like a fruity map. And you got the mango and this is like little mango pudding. The rice side is the tofu with a little palmillo on top. And what I love about this place is how soft their tofu is. Mm. And look at this. You could breathe on this tofu and it will be damaged. You mix the tofu with these little pearls. Mm. You get that nice bit of soy flavor, which is just drowned in sweet mango. And even though there's so much mango, you can for sure taste the freshness of this tofu. <laughs> look at this, this is so pretty. It's like you went diving for pearls and you just found an army of them. This is one of the more refreshing desserts you can find around here. Like it won't sit heavy in your stomach. It's chilled, it's light, it's refreshing. That's exactly what I needed today. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, it's always room for souffle pancakes. These things have been popping up all over the U.S. I had them in New York and they serve them here. And what I love about this is not only is it so incredibly fluffy and cloud-like, it entertains you by doing a little dance. Tell me that's not sexy. These pancakes might be the most fragile pancakes ever created. Mm. They did it really, really well here. This tastes like, ju just like what I had in Japan. Maybe even fluffier. If you want to give your teeth a break, don't even chew that. Don't need to. I imagine if you're flying a plane, you see some clouds, throw out some blueberry whipped cream, then jump out the plane with your mouth open, it will pretty much taste like this. I'm so glad a lot of my favorite dishes from Japan is slowly coming to the US. I found a great Japanese sandwich spot around where I live in Greater Seattle. Can't wait to show you guys that. There's souffle pancake places popping up all over the place. Now, if somebody can just open an all-you-can-eat Japanese Wagyu barbecue for under $100, I may not even need to go back to Japan. Just kidding. I gotta go back. Anyway, 
What a great food day. Delicious beef bone soup in the morning. One of the best, if not the best, Korean barbecue place I've been to in the US and the refreshing mangoes and cloud light cake. This is truly the McDonald's of food days. You know, I'm loving it. As always, guys, all the places I went to, listed down below. Thank you all so much for watching. Until we eat again, see you later.